If you're watching this video, it probably means that you're up to the stage where you're gonna start shaping your hollow core wooden surfboard and you're looking for some hints and tips. What you're gonna need for shaping your board is very little actually. So a block plane like this one is really good. On top of that, just a wood rasp. Now a rasp isn't a file, but it's very similar. So it's kind of got a much more aggressive tooth on it and it's specifically made for wood. So, you know, this will let you kind of fare in any of the tighter areas, like especially on this board where we got the fish tail, it will let us get in here and really work on this section. But it will also help us in smoothing out transitions. Now included in every DIY surfboardkits.com surfboard kit comes a template for your rail. Now it's a paper template like this one, which you will just glue down onto a piece of wood of your choosing, whether it be MDF, plywood, could even be cardboard really, it doesn't need to be anything special, and you would just cut to the line. What you'll end up with is something like this. So what this is, is our rail guide, and you can see here, this is for the classic fish, which is the board we're working on. Now all of the measurements here are the measurement taken from the tail. So at 100 millimeters from the tip of the tail, up 100 millimeters, this is basically the profile we're guiding you towards. These profiles don't necessarily have to be kept, but this is just how it's designed on the computer and kind of what we recommend. So to get started, I'm just gonna measure up these measurements onto our tail. So we've got 100 mil, 500, nine, etc., etc. And now with all of our reference marks, kind of laid out, we can start using our template. So obviously on the top deck, this is just a guide, especially. The top rail just has to be smooth and, and not too sharp. So we're, we're just looking for a big radius on all of the corners on the top. So the way I'm gonna go about this is starting with a block plane on our rails. I'm gonna have a fairly aggressive cut and we're just gonna start taking passes from one end to another. So the idea is, is you find an angle on this case, we're starting at about 45 degrees, and from one end of the board to the other, you're just taking one even shading. Now you'll do this several times until that is broadening out with your ledge here, and then you'll start tilting your plane iron to be at a slightly different angle. So we're gonna start at 45, then we'll rotate it slightly at a slightly steeper or shallower angle, and we're basically gonna be rocking the plane over until we're starting to see a nice round over on the edge. Okay, so you can see that now we're starting to get a really good bevel here. So this is about 45 degrees and we're pretty even along the entire length. So it's probably about nine millimeters wide. So now we can start working on making it round. So the way we do that is we were at 45, now we start tipping our plane over to take off the new edges that we established. So we've got this 45 degree shoulder with these 22 and a half degree edges. Well, now we're gonna split that angle and we're gonna start working on the corners we've just created. We'll do that on both the top and the bottom. And essentially what we're doing is creating a lot of little flat spots at new angles. So this is gonna start at one face, then it's gonna to go to three faces, then it's gonna to go to like nine faces until we're left with something that looks like a round over. Now once we start getting close, what I actually end up doing is while I'm pushing the plane, I'm also rotating it along the edge. So now this is gonna start fearing those corners into each other and making the transition a lot smoother again. Now with the, with the templates, one thing you gotta be careful of is up at the 900 mil mark, it looks like we've got a long way to go, but also look at the bottom profile. Unlike at the tail of this board where we have nice 90 degree edges to have, get a bit of speed happening, up about the 900 mil mark, which is halfway, we've got a pretty gentle uh, round over on the bottom edge here. So while we put this board, this piece in place, we can't get it all the way in until we start working on the bottom. So what I end up doing is I look at where the flat is, I make sure the flat is referenced on the bottom of the board, 
and then I just eyeball down to see if we got a fairly even gap. And that's looking pretty good. I think I'm not going to do too much more here. I'm just going to start smoothing it out. And there you can hopefully start to see that this is feeling more like a constant curve now. And once you've got everything fared out, you can start using fairly aggressive sandpaper. This is 60 grit to really knock down any of those high spots and focus on getting everything to a nice smooth transition. So now we have both sides pretty close, but how do we guarantee it's symmetrical? Well, we did use our template on both sides, so we know it's pretty darn close. But the way I like to see if there's anything out of shape is my hands. So I'll actually come up and using my hands, I'll feel that right here on this board, this is sharper than it is on that side. So I know that there's a high spot here and I got to take a few more passes at whichever angle. So in my kind of, I, I use my knuckles up here and I can really feel if my fingers aren't bending in the same kind of shape. And now this side is pretty good. We got a little bit more up the top here. That's feeling really good. Now coming up towards the tail, I mean, this side is just beautiful. This side, I can feel it's not quite right, but it's not off by much. So this one, I'm taking really small shavings and just get on with the job. If you're working on a fish tail like this, you're not gonna be able to get a hand plane all the way in there. So that's where a rasp comes in. Now I like, personally, I like my fish tail to be still quite sharp. So I'm basically just going to take off the edge here so it's not sharp and leave it at that. Maybe a very slight radius, but not much. Okay, so that's all of the shaping with the rasps and the block plane. Now what we wanna do is actually finesse all of this kind of rough shaping because after all, we're creating lots of little flats into the something nice and smooth. So now all we're gonna do is come in with sandpaper we're wrapping around the rail and we're just going to come back and forth. Now, we're being really careful not to hit the bottom of the deck. We're only doing the top. Bottom, we really need to keep a sharp 90 degree edge for the tail section at least. So you don't want to be wrapping your paper around. You just want to have it just hitting so it's basically riding on the radius and the flat. Now it's time to look at the bottom. Now the bottom, you've got a few things to look at. Now up at the nose, we have a big round over. That is a given. Every board has that and that does a few things. One, it actually displaces the water instead of cuts into it. It helps your board kind of pop up over the water and little bits of chop. You don't really want a sharp edge up here because then you're going to have dig-ins and you're going to get thrown off the board all the time. Now, around the middle of the board where you've got a little bit of rail contact when you're turning and all of that, you want to have a slight round over but not very much at all. So you kind of want to have a small round over so it's directing the water up until the tail section where you've got a very crisp 90 degree edge. The 90 degree edge is what gives you a very responsive board and it also reduces the amount of drag in the water that you're going to experience. Now I will do a future video which goes into more details on all of this sort of dynamics of your rail shape and how it can affect your board but basically if you stick to what your rail guide is suggesting or stick very close to it at least then you should be pretty safe to have a good performing board out in the water. So as we look at our guide, we can see that basically up until the 500 mil mark, we're not gonna really touch this edge all that much. So there will be a little bit, but not much. So what I'm going to start at is from our 500 millimeter mark upwards, we're just gonna start establishing that round over. Same deal as before, establish a flat, and then continue to work that flat out. So here I'm just working in this 
this section and then we'll jump forward and work in the next section. It's not really a uniform curve up here, so it's not going to take continuous shavings from one end to the other, but you're really going to work in sections. So right now we're working in this section, which is about 450 mil or close to two foot, I guess. And then we'll jump forward and work on the next section until everything's fed in and looking like we really want it. That's us at 1300. We're really close. Basically you just need to work it down a little bit further. But at 900, where well, we haven't worked in very much, we're already quite close. So It's just the method of continually checking with your template to make sure you're not gonna to go too far. All right, and that is all there is to doing the shaping on your board. Now, obviously it's gonna take a while. This video has been cut down a lot, uh, but do take your time. Building a surfboard is not a race. It should be something you enjoy from start to finish. And in my opinion, this process right here is the thing that really makes the project kind of memorable. It's just a really nice thing to get on with. So on the top of our deck, we've got a really nice, gentle uh, rail, which is comfortable in the hand, so we can definitely hook onto that. If we want to sit on our board with our legs and whatever, it's not going to dig in, so we're looking good there. Then on the underside, once again, we've got a nice radius up the top here, so it won't dig into the nose, won't throw us off the board. And then it graduates down to the end where we've got a nice sharp 90 degree edge, which is gonna be super responsive and give us a really nice turning circle on this board. All right guys, so if you like that video, make sure you click that thumbs up button and leave a comment below. And if you haven't already, also hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date with all of our future hollow core wooden surfboard building trick and tip videos as well as anything else we might throw out there. If you want to build your own Holy Core wooden surfboard, head over to diysurfboardkits.com.au and check out our full range of kits. And if you're in the Perth area, you could even attend a workshop right here and have our assistance throughout the build. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.